As John Shorthouse said, Game 3 out of 5 on the Vancouver Canucks road trip. They play against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they have themselves the best effort of the road trip, but they still allow 5 goals. The Vancouver Canucks have lost yet again in regulation, 5-4. This time it was way more interesting towards the end because the Canucks had a late resurgence of two goals to bring the team within one, plus the 6-on-4 empty net opportunity towards the end, thwarted away by Andre Vasilevsky on a beautiful passing play bow to Brock to Lazar, wherein Brock probably should have shot that, but he didn't. I'm going to tell you this, though. Because we're watching a lot of these videos about the Canucks losing, we're watching the games about the Canucks losing, the Canucks lost out on Dermot today, which is a pretty big hit. You also had, of course, OEL getting scratched, that in which we talked about earlier today. But in the afternoon, after publishing that OEL scratched video, I was kind of like, okay, just gotta wait a little bit till the Canucks game starts, and then we can go watch it, see what happens, and analyze from there, but something different happened. After uploading the OEL video, I kind of just ended up getting tired, and I decided to go to bed for a little bit, just take a little power nap, you know, and what do you know? I end up sleeping through the first two periods of this Canucks game. Now, part of me, as I was falling asleep, was kind of saying, you know, if we do sleep past the Canucks game, that's fine. They're going to lose anyway. It's Tampa Bay. You have Steven Stamkos, who's at 498 goals. The guy has a five-game road trip coming up after this Canucks game, so you know he's going to get himself at least one goal here today. But I'm going to sleep. If I wake up before the Canucks game, then great. If I wake up sometime in the middle of it, then okay. If I wake up sometime after it, they're probably going to lose, and lo and behold, I woke up at the end of the second. It was 4-2 Tampa Bay at that point, and I just kind of scrolled through my Sportsnet notifications. Oh, okay, Connor Garland got a goal. Very nice. We talked about him earlier today in the context of the OEL and Garland trade. Oh, JT Miller scored himself a goal as well. Very nice feed from Quinn Hughes up to Miller down the middle. Miller dangles the pants out of Andre Vasilevsky, and this is Quinn Hughes's 178th assist on his career, overtaking Ed Jovanovsky, of all people, for Canucks assists, and that's pretty interesting. But at the end of the day, you take a look at Corey Perry scoring, Nikita Kucherov scoring, you had the Brandon Hagel goal towards the end of the second, that in which got everybody frustrated because it was literally with 30 seconds to go. There was some back checking not to be done by JT Miller. A lot of people were talking about the Canucks and their defense or their forward defense in their own zone. And then just looking at the Canucks subreddit in the second period intermission, taking a look at the Twitter feed, just looking at the game charts, the heat maps, and the expected goals, Tampa was playing better. And I was like, okay, well, I woke up from my nap and I saw a picture of a game that I'm not surprised to see. This team is losing yet again. And then in the third period, you had yourselves, of course, Steven Stamkos getting himself his 5-2 goal. It was his 499th on his career, and then the fans started chanting Stamkos, and you could see Braden Points setting up Stamkos when they have two-on-ones and everything. They're all trying to get Stamkos that 500th goal on home ice before they go on that road trip, but unfortunately, that does not happen here. The Canucks actually claw back a little bit. You have Quinn Hughes, who takes a wrist shot on Vasilevsky. Little bit of a screen there. It beats Vasilevsky up high, and then with a few minutes to go in the third, it's Elias Pedersen who hammers one, absolutely fires it from the perimeter of the face-off circle. It goes right by, it's 5-4. The Canucks had themselves a 6-on-5 opportunity that became a 6-on-4 opportunity. Power play chance, and the Canucks cannot convert. You had the chance at the very end to, as we said, passing play from Horvat to Besser to Lazar. I think that Besser probably should have shot that, but okay, it's whatever. He tried to make the selfless play, and Lazar ended up having nothing to shoot at because Vasilevsky was already there. But still, the Vancouver Canucks played a game where if you look at the goals scored against them, this wasn't really Colin Delia's fault. Like, a lot of these positional goals were guys that just didn't backcheck. They are guys that didn't take their man, and I don't know, what am I supposed to say about that? We've been saying the same thing the entire year. The team lost another game, and as Shorthouse encapsulated so eloquently on the broadcast in the ending words of the show, this was the best effort the team had out of their three games so far on the road trip, but they still let in five. So, what else is there to say? OEL was scratched today for the first time in over a decade, so... Cool. Nice to see the Canucks' arguably best defenseman out there not playing, because they definitely could use a guy like him to win. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. 
there were parts of the game where it actually kind of looked like it was okay, just based off of the analysis I'd been seeing on Twitter and on Reddit. Like, of course, I didn't watch the game in its entirety, but there were parts when the Canucks were up or when it was a little bit closer and tied that you kind of saw competitiveness there, competition that actually did sort of look good. And then the backchecking is where it falls apart. It's JT Miller not taking his man on one of their goals on the rush. There really isn't anything more to say. Come on. Sell the team, Francesco. Let the team go through a rebuild. Stop it. On the pregame show, they were talking about the perspective managerially. Is that even an adjective? I'm not too sure. But they talked about the perspective of, from management's point of view, Money in, money out is roughly the same, and there still has been a good profitable number for this hockey team in terms of generating revenue, because people are buying tickets, people are going to games, and people are doing jersey sales and everything. It's good for the business perspective of the team. Therefore, the management perspective is, hey, I mean, look, we traded away some of these guys, we got some other players coming in, our money, in terms of money in, money out for the players, is relatively equal, but we're making some more money with the actual fan stuff. Is that not an acceptable season to be having here? And I don't know, I mean, of course, there is the argument that presents itself that says that's the case, but I mean, Satya Shaw, I think he was only doing it as a devil's advocate thing. I don't really think he was saying for sure that this is the case for the Canucks. I think it was more just, okay, this is kind of why they're still here, why the Canucks internally might not think that the sky is falling down like all of us fans out here do because we're watching the games and we're seeing how poorly they're playing. But I don't know. I mean, okay, I gotta go to the community center. There's dropping hockey going on and I want to play that. And I'm kind of, uh... Kind of done talking about the team for today. We'll talk about them again tomorrow and go over some more negative stuff because there's only negative stuff to talk about these days. There isn't really anything else positive to talk about because there are no prospects that are doing well. There are no stories with younger guys or whatever that I think are actually worth telling at this point in the season, at least. And now we're all just kind of waiting to see where Bo Horvat gets traded. Not best case scenario, though, because he didn't get a goal in this one. But Miller, Hughes, Petey, Garland, they all did. So, talk to me in the comments about your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Scrolls 99. And, bye.